Good evening. Welcome to First Lutheran Church. Today is Ash Wednesday. We begin our Lenten journey. Thank you for joining us. If you have your Ash uh, Wednesday, or, or I'm sorry, your Lent to go package, have it near your little bag, and together we will begin the journey. In the prophet Joel, we read, Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Lent is a season during which the whole church is encouraged to assess our faithfulness to our Lord Jesus, to recognize where we have fallen short, to repent of our sins, and to re return to the Lord through the means of grace. In the Holy Scriptures, ashes symbolize repentance. On this occasion, Ash Wednesday, ashes mark on our foreheads as a reminder that we are dust, and dust we shall return. These ashes are in the shape of a cross as a reminder that through the cross of Christ, our sins are forgiven marked with the sign of our humanity and our redemption in Christ, we are called to, day, to die daily to sin and be raised to new life with Christ. A new life in Christ is marked by the fruit of the Spirit as a way of life to which we now aspire by the grace of God. So return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Joel, chapter 2. Our opening litany. Return to the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Return from seeking after other gods. We return to you, O Lord. From misusing your name. We return to you, O Lord. From forgetting to call upon you in every trouble and from falsely or failing to in prayer. We return to you, O Lord. From failing in word and not always hearing and learning your word gladly. We return to you, O Lord. From disrespecting the authorities you have placed in our lives. We return to you, O Lord. From disregard of our neighbor's well-being. We return to you, O Lord. For failing to nurture the most important relationships in our lives. We return to you, O Lord. From the lack of complete honesty towards one another and our failure to help our neighbors improve their possessions and income. We return to you, O Lord. From speaking hurtful words about others and failing to explain our neighbors' actions in the kindest way. We return to you, O Lord. From covetous thoughts and actions. We return to you, O Lord. To your glad to your gracious word of love for us in Christ. We return. To our identity as children of God, baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We return. To Christ's body and blood, given and shed for us for the forgiveness of sins. We return. Return to the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Let us pray. Steadfast Lord, you remain a solid foundational rock, even when we are shaky and weak. We thank and praise you for your gracious invitation to return to you, not only during the Lenten season, but day by day. We are prone to wander, 
Yet your love for us never wavers, and you constantly call us to return to you. Bless our Lenten journey. Let it be for us a time of our daily returning to you, that we may be your own and live under you in your kingdom and serve you in everlasting righteousness, innocent and blessedness through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So in your Let to Go bag, the very first item in that bag is a little pouch with ashes, a Q-tip and ashes. And this is called the imposition of ashes. So together we, if you may, take your Q-tip with ashes and put on your forehead and say to yourself, Dust we are, and dust we shall return. Remember that you are dust, and dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and dust you shall return. Now join us for the invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our confession and forgiveness. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by the nature of sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have loved under. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we might delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Hear the words of forgiveness. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. Those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun his good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. A reading from Joel. The reading for Ash Wednesday is from Joel, the second chapter. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even if it's at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, Spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, Where is their God? This is the word of the Lord.
When a teacher rings a bell like this in a classroom, that is usually a sign to get quiet and listen. Sometimes bells like this or giant metal triangles are used to call farmers or ranchers home for lunch or dinner. Many churches have larger bells to call people to worship Jesus. It is good for children to get reminders from their parents to come home. It is even better for all of us that God calls us to come to his house to worship him. In our Bible reading today, the prophet Joel is like the bells. God's people had turned away from God. God uses Joel to tell the people that they need to return to God. Their minds were not thinking about God and his good gifts. They did not love God with all of their hearts. God wants to have a better relationship with all his people. To God, we are like family. Today is what we call Ash Wednesday, and many churches like us are placing black ashes on our foreheads. This is a reminder that we have turned away from God by sinning, but the ashes are in the shape of a cross. This reminds us that God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. So let's say that together. So repeat after me. God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Our God loves us so much that he sent his son, Jesus, to die on the cross for us. God calls us back to him by giving us Jesus. This is how God shows his love for us. Even though we sin, God calls us to come back to him. He reminds us we are baptized. We have God's name placed on us. We belong to him. We are a part of God's family. We are always welcome and always encouraged to come back to him. And we can even encourage one another to come back to God. So we're going to pray and please repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God, Thank you for making us a part of your family. Thank you for making us a part of your family. We are sorry. We are sorry. When we don't think about you, we are sorry when we don't love you as we should. Thank you for calling us back to you and for reminding us that we belong to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our Holy Gospel reading for this evening comes from the Gospel of Matthew, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus is teaching about how to follow him. He says, be aware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in their synagogues and on the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your, let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in synagogues and at street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received the reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who sees in secret, 
and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismayed, dismayed like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so that they can show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received the reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be, may be seen not by others, but your, fa but your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourself treasures on earth where moths and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moths nor rust consume and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father, from the coming and living Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Today is Ash Wednesday, the beginning of our Lenten journey, and our theme for this year is Return to the Lord. For this evening, for this first week, our theme is called A Call to Return. And it is based on Joel, the story of Joel. And Joel is a prophet. And he gives this dark, terrifying image of these locusts that will consume the countryside. And this is the Lord speaking to Joel as Joel prophesies and tells the people that if they don't turn in their way and turn from their sinful nature and return back to God, this is what might happen to them. We know that locusts will consume the plants and the trees and the crops and wipe out their livelihood and their economy. It's a plague. We know what plagues can do. Now we're not sure if this is true or if it was a, just strictly a warning, but nevertheless it's a call to come back to the Lord. Maybe we all have our own things that we can be called back from. We've gone astray. But this Latin journey is designed and set up for us to walk with Jesus to his death and resurrection and new life as we contemplate the call back to our Lord. So today, as I mentioned, our, the theme, the title is A Call to Return. And then now next week, in, again in your Lenten bags, your Lent to go, you'll find a call to return to prayer. And then the week after, uh, return from betrayal, a call to return from false witness, a call to return from denial, a call to return from return to the kingdom of God, a call to return to the table of our Lord Jesus, a call to return to truth, a call to return to church, and then on Easter Sunday, a call to return and see what God has done for you. So see, each week as we journey through the season of Lent, we will be called, and it gives us a chance to return to our Lord. When we think about the call, I think about the story of the young, rich man who came to Jesus and asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life in the kingdom of God? And Jesus said simply, go and sell your possessions, give them away to the poor, and then come follow me. The young man couldn't do that. He walked away sad. And Jesus was sad and he said to his, explained to his disciples how difficult it is to get into the kingdom of heaven with wealth. What are the things that bog us down, that keep us from having that relationship with God? I had a really close friend who, who we did so many things together. We, 
met each other in the church and we were brothers in Christ. And then he got caught up in a pyramid scheme and tried to get me to follow him in the scheme and in in kind of uh, buy in to this way of thinking to make money on other people that I could work my way up to the top of the pyramid. It felt so wrong. And I could feel the pulling from God and faith and in my call to ministry. But to the call was to wealth and to be wealthier and I was told I would be happier, and I was told that I could do more for the church because of this new wealth. And God called me away from that, and I lost that friend, and that friendship severed. But thank goodness I was able to return to the Lord, who is gracious and loving and kind and abounding in steadfast love. So God extends this invitation to us, friends, calls us away from the things that distract us from God. Maybe it could be the things of the world today, the political circus or the pandemic and vaccine and, and maybe just, I don't know, just being tired of long, cold winter. But let this be a, a, a renewal for us that we can set our eyes to a loving God who's calling us and begging us to come closer in a relationship with him. That we can walk towards the cross of Christ that resurrected Jesus and offer that new life, eternal life with God in heaven. I'm excited about this journey that we can take together. And it begins the first step today. So as Joel extends to his people, Joel extends to us, return to the Lord. God is only loving. God is only caring and kind. Slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Receive the invitation. Come along. Follow Jesus. Let us pray. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all people who are in need. With repentant hearts, let us turn to God in prayer. Let us pray for the church, that this Lenten season would draw us closer to God and to one another. As we focus on Jesus, we redemptive act for us and the life that he calls us to live, marked by repentance, fasting, praying, acts of love towards our neighbor. Let us pray. We return to you, O Lord. We pray for leaders throughout the world, that all leaders of national, regional, and local would serve with wisdom and uphold justice and provide the means of caring for those who are most vulnerable among us. In prayer, we return to you, O Lord. For those of our community who struggle with poverty, addiction, and unemployment, that during this Lenten time, you would re-energize your church to serve them with love and serve our neighbor who is in need as you love and serve the poor, the outcast during your earthly ministry. In prayer, we return to you, Lord. For those who are sick, hospitalized, and dying, that they experience healing according to your will, and that in the midst of their suffering, that they would experience the presence of Jesus in word of hope, in acts of care, in prayer, we return to you, O Lord. For this congregation that are 
intensified repentance, fasting, and prayer leads us to live a renewed way, dying to sin with Christ in holy baptism each day, and by being raised to new life as well as every day into eternity. In prayer, we return to you, Lord. For your beloved ones who faithfully follow Jesus in this life and are now with him in heaven, we give thanks, bringing us to the day that when your saints, past, present, and future, are returned to you for all eternity. In prayer, we return to you, Lord. For the words of the prophet and by the living voice of Jesus in our ear, you call us to return to you, O Lord, according to your gracious mercy and abounding love. Hear these prayers that this day that we have spoken, and as well as the prayer that have the, the, the prayers that are too deep for words, and for the sake of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Receive a benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn, Change My Heart, O God. 